r slash ask reddit by reddicle business owners of reddit what's the most obnoxious reason an employee quit had to be fired over my dad and i ran a business together cleaning out foreclosed homes for a real estate agency as i was finishing high school i was a senior so i got out at lunchtime and we could usually get a house done in a half day Sometimes we'd get some bad ones and we had a few guys that we would call to see if they wanted to make a quick hundred bucks for a day's work. On my literal last day of class my dad picked up one of our usual guys and got one house about 90% done by lunch. He was a pretty normal guy that we had never had any trouble with. The guy we paid to help my dad went out to the truck and came back into that house with a gun and robbed my dad of his wallet and took his keys and left in our truck. Funny thing is my dad only had the cash he was about to give him an hour later for finishing up the house. The state police got the guy's number from us and they told him some bogus story about how my dad was being investigated for not paying his workers and if met them with the truck they would get his statement and let him go. Idiot pulls up and gets arrested on the spot. He got 8 years in prison. Seriously what the duck? I had a subcontractor on a job for my company try and convince the client that they should dump me and go with their business and they would undercut me by 10%. Learned this from the client. Who asked me to find another person to service our contract? My parents got a quote on some plumbing work they needed once from a chain company, Roto Router. I think, and they quoted some enormous fee in the high thousands. Then. Individually while one is talking to my mother and the other guy is talking to my father on a different area of the property. They each mention they run their own side business and could do the work for way less. I still wonder if they knew they were trying to undercut each other as well as trying to undercut their employer. My parents went with someone else. Employee had corporate card. Charged a vacation. Purse. Fossil watch. Takeout. Along with overall being miserable to work with. Had laptop stolen within weeks of joining. Fired her. And a few days later a watch catalog from Fossil showed up at the office with her name on it. Have active court cases for all the theft. I work for a decent sized company, 7k, and the large majority of employees do not have a corporate card. I do for travel. And was told the company loses around 6 million a year for personal charges from them ducking mind-blowing people think they can get away with it like we have a ducking department to track this not like you can throw away the receipt and poof no proof i interned at goldman they gave us corporate credit cards for travel and meals if we had to stay late one kid bought himself an xbox one with it he lost the internship in about a day we had a young it intern helping with some hardware inventory tasks it wasn't uncommon for laptops not to make it back to us as projects would hoard them from terminated employees but one day we noticed his backpack open and a laptop of a model we used sticking out. Sent him to the other side of the building and checked the serial number and yep, it was one he reported as missing during a recent inventory. Opportunistic theft is one thing but bringing it back into the office every day. Just. Row. Opportunistic theft made me think of this real dumb kid. I worked at an electronics store that rhymes with blessed high. On our old register system a kid figured out that you could give discounts to a certain percent based on the item and price without a manager. So he started discounting things for his friends. You're probably thinking oh I'd love if a friend discounted a TV for me. Nope. That's not what he'd do. He'd do candy bars. PC games. Movies. What he'd do is he'd search for discounts and our point of sale recorded every change or attempted change to a transaction. So what you'd see is. Bag of chips, those Fridays once, $3.29. Discount 30% override required. Cancelled. Discounts 25% accepted. Discounts 25% override required. Discount 20% accepted. Discount 15% accepted. Discount 10% accepted. Discount 10% override required. Cancelled. In the end he'd end up giving people 40-70% off of whatever it was they were buying. But it was all stupid piddly shit. I think the largest discount he got around to was like $30. We still had to fire him. I'm not a business owner but I'm a student manager. Aka I don't really have the ability to fire someone. But I had to in this case. 
This one kid was troubled to say the least. And I asked him to go check the bathrooms to make sure they were clean stocked. When he asked about the woman's room. I said just to knock and make sure nobody was inside. Apparently he banged on the door and screamed. In his very deep voice. WHO in here? Everybody get out he then entered the bathroom where a poor little elderly woman was inside the stall. And continued to bang on the stall yelling get out. He was yelling so loud I actually heard him and went to investigate. The poor woman was whimpering and calling the police. And he just was the kind of person who had no idea how he came across. There was many weird issues but this obviously topped the cake. And I told him he was done and needed to go home. The poor old woman was so upset that she refused to leave the bathroom and I had to call her son for her. Private security here. If I heard a call like this from a guard. I'd be thinking we're dealing with some I hope the police get here fast enough shit. Here. When dealing with opposite sex restrooms. We knock loudly three times. Security. Anyone in there? And then repeat this cycle once more before opening the door. I'm not sure what we'll do if we ever hire a deaf employee and nobody tells us. Not a business owner. But. At a previous job we had issues with food being stolen from the break room fridge. The company made a big stink about it and it kept happening so they very obviously installed security cameras in the break room. Like big ducking cameras in plain sight. Pointing at the fridge. With our bosses being very direct about there is the camera. You really want to lose your job over eating someone's sandwich? Few days later guy gets fired for stealing food. Literally on camera just grabbing people's lunch out of the fridge and eating it. At that point I'd be hard pressed to figure out why he felt his job was worth less than one sandwich. Good. There's a ducking break room thief at every job site in America and I think they should be held down and have gallons of milk of magnesia poured down their throats. Duckers. Edit. OMG gold. Who'd have thought I'd get gold for such a shitty comment. Thank you. Don't own a business but work on employee claims and lawsuits. I've told this story on here before. A guy filed a discrimination complaint against the company after he got fired for stealing hot dogs from the refrigerator. This warehouse, big company this was not at my location, kept a stock of hot dogs for employee appreciation picnics, usually weekly cookouts. No one knew why they were disappearing so announcements were made and all employees were asked to not eat the hot dogs and if they wanted some they could ask but couldn't have several packs. That didn't work so warnings were announced. Finally a camera was installed near the refrigerator and he got caught red handed. He was just practically inhaling the hot dogs directly from refrigerator the by the packs. After he was fired. He filed a discrimination claim on the basis of disability due to his weight. I sent the response with a video of him eating the hot dogs. Also. He couldn't prove his weight was a disability under the ADA and weight is not a protected class. We won that claim. The picture of an obese man on his knees as if in prayer in front of a fridge just eating raw hot dogs by the pack is something I never thought I would be forced to face. It's been about 15 years since I've seen the video and it still grossed me out. My dad owned his own business working as a color corrector slash editor. He had this one employee who had been there since day one and ended up becoming similar to an assistant manager. My dad owned that company for 10 plus years and just recently. He had to fire the assistant manager because apparently he was telling employees and customers that my dad hates gays. People who aren't white. His kids. His whole family. That he's a terrible person. Etc. Basically driving all business away. Pushing my dad's company towards bankruptcy. Turns out he was a narcissistic sociopath. My dad's just sad his employees never trusted him enough to tell him about what this guy would say to them. I wonder if the guy saying those things could be liable for slander slash libel? He caused intentional damage to your dad's business reputation in his statements. Maybe that's worth looking into. Yes. However. Proving it and getting damages are two different things that you need to consider. Had a guy on a location fake an injury. Now mind you he did injure himself severely accidentally. But that wasn't his plan. His plan had been to fake a minor injury and get put on workers comp. The problem was he screwed up how to do it and ended up hurting himself severely. You ask how did you know he was trying to fake injure himself? Well that's very easy to explain. 
We had a 20 minute tape of him hiding behind one of the trucks on the worksite practicing his fall. Then a written confession from friends saying that he'd been planning it since the day we hired him. Was his plan to only get a little run over? His plan was to twist his ankle in one of the small goofa size holes on the location. Instead he tripped over a clearly marked line of pipe and impaled himself on another piece of pipe. It apparently screwed up his intestines pretty badly. Tool and die shop owner here. One of our machinists would go out for lunch and slam back 3-4 beers every day. When I found out I told him he can't drink beer at lunch. He said it was his time and what he did at lunch was his business. Not mine. The next day he came back from lunch smelling like beer. I let him go on the spot. A few years later he showed up in my office asking for his old job back. He said that he was an alcoholic back then and was sorry for his behavior. He was now sober and needed a job. I hired him on the spot and it worked out great for 5 or 6 years. Then he started drinking again and I had to let him go a second time. I have no idea how he is doing now but I often wonder. He was a great machinist and a nice guy when he was sober. He was a great machinist. Must have been to liquid lunch on the regular and have still 10 fingers. Definitely. I'm not even sure how much 3 beers affected him. But that's not something I could ignore. If he hurt himself and had any alcohol in him I would have been ducked. The second time he didn't drink at lunch. But was drunk at 7am from the night before. It was a shame because he had his shit together for a few years. Then his demons caught up with him. I used to do some consulting work and hired a woman to help out. Mostly clerical stuff and whatnot. I flew down to St. Thomas for a meeting and got a call from Sonatrol at 1030pm. She had keys to my building but didn't know about the alarm. Basically. She and her boyfriend brought another couple down to have a foursome in one of my offices I had converted to a bedroom where I could crash if I worked late. So I called her. She answered mid keletus and acted normal. Albeit a little tipsy. I talked about a few mundane details I needed to relay to her anyways and then mentioned to make sure she only was ever at the office between 700am and 700pm since there was a silent alarm that that would call me with audio of activities in the building. When I got back in town her keys were sitting on my desk. I guess she ducked up. And down. Probably sideways. 2. Medical clinic. An employee told a patient he wants to know what she tastes like. Doesn't get much worse. Not many exit interviews start with. We really hope that was just sexual harassment. But we're gonna inventory the samples just in case. Yeah. When sexual harassment is the least concerning explanation. Back when I had my translation business. I hired a guy to seek out contracts for me. I'd pay him 20% finder's fee. Instead of sending the finished project to a client. He accidentally sent naked pictures of himself. I learned of it when my client forwarded me the mail half an hour later. Including the, multiple, glorious cockashits. I don't even. I'd love to hear an explanation for this. I fired a guy because he said he couldn't come to work because it was raining and he had just washed his car the day before. Woman was using company FedEx to deliver purses for her Etsy shop. When you guys found out you should have ordered a purse to the address of the HR department. Then just watch her panic and confusion. We had an employee who had been fired. It was one of those really contentious firings and he was physically removed from the building. After he was fired he used the company FedEx to deliver his eBay sales. The company brought charges against him. It wasn't one or two sales here and there. He had a whole huge operation and was shipping out 20 plus shipments a week. I guess he thought it was too big a corporation for anyone to be reviewing the FedEx bills. Which was true until one of the big executives hired on a family member and we had to find something for them to do. I worked for a boutique hotel, you know. Small. Cute. Expensive af, as an ops manager. Basically. Unless the area manager had to come in. I was the law. I get a frantic call on my downtime from an employee claiming our overnight guy tried to assault him. I have a sigh. As the guy freaking out is notorious for being a drama queen. I load up the security camera on my home PC. Go to the time frame. And holy shit. Our night guy legitimately lunged at his co-worker and tried to strangle him. 
Luckily a desk was between them. And that gave the victim time to bolt. Instantly felt like a dong for doubting him. Well. This is when I call in the area manager. We show up at the ass crack of dawn and speak with the dude who made the attack and he claims he didn't do it. We show him the video. And I shit you not he responds with. I don't recall the events of that evening. We fired him on the spot. What started the fight you ask? Well. The victim had done extra work to make the attacker's shift easier. The attacker felt like this was an insult to his work ethic. Oh. And I got multiple reference requests from similar hotels asking for a good reference. I simply said I wasn't able to provide a positive reference. As legally that was all I could say. Employee. Does a nice thing. Overnight guy. You deserve to die now. There can only be one overnight guy. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for 3 videos a day.